day that I'm doing a Q&A of old questions that y'all have asked over the past year and I'm going to give you a few explanations just so you know where my head's at and so you don't think I'm as crazy as I actually am. Um, first of all, you, I asked a long time ago before I left Houston to, if you would like Scott and I to do a Q and A, I told you that we filmed it and it was horrible and it was boring. We actually tried it again about a week and a half ago and it was the worst. We are just super stiff when we're together on film. Scott does not like doing it. You know, he'll talk off the cuff. Only when he's when we're out and about, but to sit down and talk on a video, he doesn't want to do it. So I'm going to answer all those questions the way him and I answered them together. But first, I'm going to do, because I have so many questions. People ask the same question over and over about Scott and I, so I'm going to answer those today. But I thought I would give you an update on a couple of things. Because if I were you, these are the things I would be thinking. Number one. What the heck? I thought you were gluten-free, Terry Gigi. Well, I was gluten-free for a long time, and I felt good. I looked good. I mean, you know, I felt good in my body. I was a perfect weight for my body. Um, my stomach was fine. It never hurt. It never blah, blah, blah. Well, through all the travel and all the move and moving and, and, and just stuff, I slowly started eating gluten again. But gluten has a, an addictive quality for me. It's so addictive, way more than sugar. So you saw me in Paris eating, you know, whatever I wanted and having bread and everything. And so I just wanted you to know, because I'm not gluten-free now, my stomach hurts all the time. I've gained five ugly pounds. You know, a lot of people can carry five pounds. I can't. My five pounds are so ugly. I'm so uncomfortable. Every time I eat a meal, I'm, I, I'm sick. I, I, okay, I'm going to go back to gluten-free. But it is difficult. I think it's almost harder to go back on gluten-free than it was to do it in the first place because I've got that taste and that urge to eat like that again. Well, Terry, Gigi, whatever happened to Weight Watchers? Well, Scott and I did Weight Watchers together. Very successful and Scott gained it all back when we got off Weight Watchers. Again, we were moving, he was living here alone. You know, it's just, he has a horrendous work schedule. Um, he doesn't eat uh, on a normal schedule. It's just difficult. So not making excuses, well actually I am. I hope that we can do something together again um, because he doesn't diet well unless I'm dieting with him. But uh, yeah, so we're off Weight Watchers, but let me tell you, it was super successful if we had just not just gone crazy eating out because we were, you know, traveling and busy and unpacking and doing all the things. Um, skin Clinical. I did a video, I will link it in the description box, uh, talking about something called Skin Clinical. It was a light machine that you do on your wrinkles. Um, and I told you I would do an update. Well, the reason I didn't do the update is because at the very, the, like the last two to three weeks I was doing it, because I think it was a 12 week process, I left it at home when I went to Paris and London. And then I left it at home again when I traveled over Christmas. So I completely messed it up. But I will tell you, I got results. I felt like I could see results. Now it would be hard for you to see them even if I did the close up but I got results here. It softened my wrinkles. So I'm just letting you know that's the, that's the skinny on that. I think it was successful. It wasn't a miracle. Your wrinkles are not all gonna disappear, but I do think it made a difference. So that's an update there. Home decor update. All right, I've told y'all forever that I'm gonna do an apartment tour. As soon as we get settled, I'm gonna do an apartment tour. I gave you the empty apartment tour, or the, I actually gave you the apartment tour with the rented furniture in it. You know, you've seen parts of it in the backgrounds of my videos. Um, I've redone my office, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is wrong because I've told y'all not to do this. Don't compare yourself. I have videoed, I can't tell you how many videos I've made, redoing my closet, redoing the closet out there um, in the other room, redoing the, the uh, hall closet in there. I've done videos doing it, but you know what? They're not beautiful. They're not all mat. Not everything in the closet matches. Like all matching notebooks, boxes, storage things, all matching, beautiful, all white. None of mine look like that. 
So I'm kind of like, why do you want to see my tacky closet? It's organized. I think it looks great, but it's not perfect. So I have not uploaded any of that footage. I don't know. What do you think? The other thing is about the apartment. I could show you. We, we love it. It's so comfortable. We love living here in this little spot. But it's not Pinterest. It's not youtube -y. It's not all white and everything perfect. Because I refuse to spend the money making this apartment perfect because I'm going to move someday and I don't want to put a lot of money into it. You know, my big dilemma is do I buy drapes or not? You know, even just simple side drapes. Um, I think it would make the apartment look so much better, but I don't even want to spend the money on something like that. We've got blinds. They look fine. We're good to go. You know what I mean? I, it's not like I'm giving up, but it's just the way we like it. But it's not... I don't know if you'd want to see it because it's not that great. It's just regular. So that's my dilemma on home decor and the apartment updating. I haven't forgotten. I think about it all the time. I really promised the people that I would do an apartment tour. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so that's it on that. Now we're going to answer these quick questions. And this is going to be the lightning round. So get ready to go. All right. Some of these are about Scott and I, but there's a couple of other questions. Number one, from Cat New, New CO2, most memorable meal in Paris. Okay, of course this would be the thing I would want to talk about first. Okay, most memorable meal in Paris was two trips ago. We had gone five years in a row, and this was the fifth year, and we knew that we weren't gonna go back the next year. Scott was in the middle of cancer treatments and it was bad and we just knew that we weren't gonna come back for a few years. So our last night of our fifth trip years ago, um, we went to a little restaurant in Montmartre and uh, it was just tiny, teeny tiny. If I can find a clip or a photo, I will insert it here, but I don't think I have it anywhere, but maybe I can get it. So we have this teeny tiny restaurant. And I had passed it a hundred times and I always wanted to go in it, y'all, because it had such ambiance, but it was tick, it was tacky. It wasn't fancy. It was really old. And when you walk by, the doors were always open. It was an old, old building. And this is up in the little twisty, turny streets of Lamar. And so we passed by it and it was dark in there. And there was always a piano playing, kind of like it it was French, but it was kind of sounded like a Shakey's Pizza type of piano. It was always a piano playing, and it was a bar, but yet it had a menu bar out, board outside, so I knew they served food. Anyway, that night, I said, we're going in this place. We're going in this place, because I was so afraid we would never go back to Paris again. So we went in, and they seated us upstairs. Okay, let me set the scene. Tiny, tiny room. Y'all, it was so small, and it was packed with tables. They put us in this corner table. They had to pull the table out for me to go in and sit. So they pull the table out. I'm sitting in. Our table is shoved against a window that looks out down onto the street because we're upstairs, okay? And it's raining. It's raining and it's cold, okay? So we're in this and then I sit down. They put the table back and Scott sits down. Why did they have to pull the table out? Because our table was touching the table next to us. Every table was touching, kind of. It was very unsafe, y'all. We sat there and we were eating and everything. And I said, what if there's a fire? We're going to be burned alive because there's no way to escape through all. You'd be jumping over tables and people and it was packed. Yeah, by now, by the time we got our food packed, full of people, everyone's talking. Anyway, we started drinking wine. All right. Disclaimer, we drink wine every night when we're in Paris, but that is not our regular life. We do not drink wine here every night, even though we have a wine fridge. That is not our way. We don't do that at all. But when we're in Paris, we drink wine every night. But the wine in Paris is different. It does not usually make you tipsy for whatever reason. It just doesn't. 
it just, I don't know, is it, I think it's because we drink it so slow over such a long period of time, because we're usually in a restaurant at least two hours. Okay, so we're having our wine in this tiny restaurant, and we're making jokes about the restaurant and how we could go through the window if there was a fire and all this stuff. Well, we get tickled. I mean, we get tickled, y'all. Tears, both of us. Like, stomach hurting laughter because, and I don't even remember why, something we were saying about the situation that we're in, how we can't get out. Okay, this is the space upon which I'm supposed to pass. Here's our table. <laughs> and here's the spaceage. Do you see any more space? Well, there's about six inches down there. But let me just say, this would not be acceptable in the United States. What if there was a fire in this little room? We'd all be killed. It would be a simple killing of all of us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Scott's going out the window down there. <laughs> We had a little meltdown here of laughter. It was embarrassing. Scott was the most embarrassing one of the two. <laughs> okay, I'm moving on to another subject. Every time we think about our most memorable meal in Paris, it was that night. And I remember it so well, how hard we laughed how long we sat there, how, how kitschy and crazy this tiny room is full of French people, you know. And the waiter was laughing with us. <laughs> and I remember leaving and walking through the rain and the cold with no umbrella to get back to the apartment, to wake up at 6 a.m. the next morning to catch a taxi, to go home. And it's just, it was the perfect way to close out what we thought could have been our last trip there. Of course, we are on the roll again going. Now, Debbie Hill, how long have you and Scott been married? 37 years. No, it will be 37 years in August. And it says, what's your secret to a happy marriage? Secret to a happy marriage would be, it's so much better than it used to be, our marriage, because I quit thinking that he had to do everything the way I thought it should be done. When I quit doing that and let him do his own thing, because he always let me do my own thing, that's when everything just went just perfect. Uh, quit trying to change your husband, because you're A, not going to be successful, and B, you're going to be nagging and just, ugh. And um, yeah, that's we just started quit making each other be something that we're not. That's uh, the secret, I think, to a happy marriage. Um, what's your favorite thing about each other? I don't have this person's name. Favorite thing about each other. When Scott and I did the video with these questions that was so bad, I think he told, he said that he liked, um, what was it he said he liked about? that I was fun, I think he said. And my favorite thing about Scott is that he's solid. He is dependable. He's dependable. He is one of those quiet men that family first, me first, um, job second, um, so dependable, strong, steady. That's it. That's my favorite thing about him. Um, Skirty 2, what would you say individually was your most defining moment in life so far? When we did this question together, neither one of us had an answer. I mean, it would be, you know, having children is defining. It changes you completely. So I guess that's kind of would be the most defining moment. And um, number two, now that you are both on the other side of 50, what is it you feel most passionate about going into the second half of life? For me, it is don't waste any more time. I, if, oh, you know, someday when we get to heaven, if God shows us a video of the hours, days, years, cumulatively, that we waste, I think we'll be so upset and so shocked. So mine is don't waste any time, and Scott's is get to retirement as soon as possible. That is his uh, whole life goal right now. 
Um, Gail Marriage asks, for you and Scott, could you talk about how much how Scott's cancer recovery changed your relationship and what you learned? Um, I would say the number one thing that that experience taught us was that we're a great team. We work better together um, as far as a goal. Um, we were focused on saving his life, and that is all we were focused on for those for that time period. Um, we learned that we are great support for each other. Um, I learned a lot about Scott. Uh, he is so brave. Um, he never complained. I don't think he ever complained uh, during the whole thing. Um, now, he would tell me some stories of what happened to him when he was in different procedures and stuff and make me laugh so hard, but... Yeah, that's, that's that. Okay. Princess asked, uh, marriage secrets, how you guys manage the different seasons of marriage and coping strategies with in-laws and relatives? Um, different seasons of marriage, um, take it as it comes. Marriage changes. It has ups and downs. We all know that if you've been married more than like two years, it has ups and downs. Don't give up. Do not give up, no matter how bad you think it is, unless there's a weird, a, a real problem, like cheating or something like that. Um, marriage has different seasons. There's times when it's so hard. There's times when it gets easier. There's times when it's awful because of other things happening. And yeah. Um, and strategies with in-laws and relatives. Um, hmm. Strategies. Let them be who they are. You know, let them be who they are and uh, just realize that someday you're going to be an in-law and, you know, I don't know if I'm doing a very good job at all being an in-law. I know I'm not to Lexi. Well, I'm not her in-law. I'm her mother, but I'm still on that advice thing. And I just, when I'm with her, I can't seem to get off it. And I, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know why. I just, I didn't do that to Megan and Craig, but to Colin and Lexi, I feel like I give them way too much advice and I'm trying so hard to stop that. I think I get a little tiny bit better each time I'm with them. Okay, Melissa Pintone said, how did your relationship change after the kids moved out? It became so much better, so much closer because there was a real push-pull with me with the kids. A lot of times, I have to admit, I put the kids first. I put the kids before Scott. He never did that. And I would tell him, that's not right. Quit putting me first. They're first. So we never got over that. We never got past that, you know? And again, let the person be who they need to be, you know? I felt like I needed to put them first, but I don't think you're supposed to do that, but whatever. Um, so things got better after all the kids were gone, most definitely. And our favorite part, I have to say, is not that they're gone because our kids were fun and entertaining and fun to talk to and, you know, but our favorite part is, is when we go to bed and the house is perfect. When we wake up the next morning, the house is exactly the way we left it. And when we clean the kitchen and go sit down to watch TV and then we get up to get our water to go to bed, the kitchen's still clean. Do you know what I'm saying? I think also that we like having our own schedule with no one else to think about. I know that sounds selfish, but we've earned it. We've earned it. We've been married 36 years. Um, Paper Moon Reality asked, how does your relationship change, if at all, after the kids leave home? I just answered that, but how did our relationship change? Um, I think we've actually gotten closer. Yeah. I think we've gotten closer after they left. Um, and I think we actually enjoy them more now than we did towards the end. Because when it's time for kids to move out and move on and do, 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 and they're really adults, you know, that all, that whole thing, you know, needs to happen. And that makes things better. Sharon Walker said, when is your husband planning on retiring? In the next three to four years. Billy Forever, Forever 06. Uh, could you talk about if you've made plans for when Scott retires, how will it affect your day when he is home all the time, and how will he feel his time apart from spending it with you? Okay, we really don't know the answer to these questions. I don't think our relationship will change because we did have a time period where Scott was home, working from home. So he was home all the time. 
It was a big adjustment. Nicole, Nicole de, Klerk, de Klerk said, I want to ask Scott if he thinks his wife is as hilarious as we think. Like, I guess y'all, um, I asked him this question and he said, yes, I do. Okay. Oh, Billy Forever. This is what I was on. How will it affect your day when he's home all the time? You know, he was home all the time then, but I had still, um, I think we still had Lexi in the house. So I was still involved with her and doing stuff. Here, home every day in this apartment in this town would not go well. So, because there's not a whole lot to do. And I, I've told him a thousand times he's not going to turn into a TV person. I hate that, but he loves TV. So we'll see how all that goes. I really don't know what we're going to do other than whether we go to Georgia or Florida or wherever. He wants a boat and he wants to be near water because he wants to fish and just boat. He loves that. And we've never been able to do that. And um, hopefully we will do that in retirement. Uh, Jeannie Hans says... Life after kids, I already talked about that. Life after a major move, how did you adapt? How do you adapt? <sighs> you just do. Um, you get to know your town, you get to know some restaurants. It's weird, y'all. It's weird being here. I still haven't made a friend at all. We still haven't joined a church. Um, and we've got to change that because it's not good for me just to be in this house every day, all day long. It's just not uh, good. When you don't feel like cooking, because you used to cook for four kids, I had three kids, and now it's just the two of you, what do you do? Uh, I cook almost every night now, where with the kids, when everybody was home, I was terrible about planning dinner before five o'clock. Because nobody ate on, the, towards the end, nobody ate on the same schedule. It was just a mess. I hated that. Now I love it. I know exactly when Scott's going to walk on the in the door because he texts me when he leaves work. I know I have 45 minutes. I'll go in there then and plan dinner, or a lot of times I'll do it in the morning. It's easier. It's wonderful. I love it, and it's so much easier to cook for two than it is for other people that won't eat what you cook. Scott eats anything I cook. So, okay, this was a long video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I might